Hello, today we're going to be reading about meditating on God's Word. It goes along with the lesson that I've um, been teaching. I think we're into the seventh study and the battlefield of the mind by Joyce Myers. And we just studied and learned about our the last video on meditating on God's Word, what it means to meditate on the Word of God. So go back and watch that last video, I think it is. Um, but this is something that reminded me of that study. It goes along with it. So here we go. To meditate on God's Word means to ponder it and give it our full attention. We meditate when we pause to reflect on a word, a phrase, or a concept. The words of Scripture are there for us to savor and enjoy. Meditating on God's Word is more about the quality than quantity. Think about that. Getting a deep understanding of one verse of Scripture is more important than reading five chapters and not understanding much of what you read. So it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality. You know, in the Spirit of God speaking through you, to you through those little ver the portion of verses, one verse, uh, verses five chapters. Meditating on God's Word requires much discipline. Much discipline. Because our flesh, a lot of times, would rather do other things than to stop what we're doing to read God's Word. But that's all about, you can't live each day based on your feelings. If you, I mean, if you would, your feelings are so fickle. Mine are, anyway. And I don't think I could survive if I lived every day based on how I feel. I live each day based on faith and what God's Word says. So, one of the best habits we can develop is to set aside time each day to sit and read and think about God's Word and the wonderful promises He has made to those who believe in Him. Solomon says in Proverbs 4, verses 20 through 22, My son, pay attention to my words and be willing to learn. Open your ears to my sayings. Do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and healing and health to all flesh. So that's how important God's word is. Contemplating the meaning of scripture is God's command to all of us. And it is a requirement for true success in our walk with the Lord. I think of God's instructions to Joshua as he prepared to lead at least two million people into the promised land. He promised to be with Joshua and urged him to be very courageous. Then he said, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall read and meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will be successful. This is the scriptures. I love these kinds of scriptures. It's like, to me, the before and after and the in-between. I don't know why, but, but that's how I describe them. Like, if you do this and this, then this is the outcome. And here's the bridge and the in-between part. So, I want to just read this again. So, he urged him, God urged Joshua to be very courageous. He was stepping into a position, being directed and led by God. He didn't really have experience. God picked him to lead millions of people into the promised land. Real big position. Very huge promotion. So Joshua really had to trust God. So he told him, the book of the law, which is the word that they had back then, the scrolls, the scriptures, don't let them depart from your mouth. Read them and meditate on them day and night 
so that you may be careful if you do these things, read and meditate on God's word day and night, you may be careful to do everything in accordance with what's written in it. So you'll read the word, you'll know the word, and you obey the word. Then you will make your way prosperous and you will be successful in all you do. And that's in Joshua 1 verse 8. Joshua's primary responsibility was to contemplate Think on the commands of God. By immersing himself in the law, he was learning to understand the mind of God more fully. God went on to say that if Joshua kept his mind and heart on the word, on the law, he would be prosperous and successful. God's favor would be on his life for him to be prosperous and successful. God doesn't want the enemy to fill your mind with ungodly thinking because he knows the enemy can control your life if he controls your thoughts. And he sure can. Decide right now that you will resist the enemy's efforts to influence your thoughts by filling your mind with the truth of God's word, meditating on it every day. So make your mind up that you're going to read God's word and think on it every day, even if it's one or two scriptures. And you'll dwell on that scripture and think on it, reread it if you can't remember it. A lot of times I do. I have to reread it a few times and then it sticks and then I can think on it. I can pray it over my life every day, pray it over my loved one's lives, you know, and over their minds. And so I hope this helped us learn more about meditating on God's Word. Let's just take, um, take a, time, a minute here to, to talk to God about it. Father, you have told me to meditate on your Word, and I ask you to help us, God, to do just that. We want your Word, Father, to be the focus of our life. As we meditate on your Word regularly, Help us, God, to see good progress in our lives. We ask you this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen, and thank y'all for joining in. I'll be posting short videos. I don't know if you're able to see um, how long the video is. I think you can. But anyway, the ones that's only a few minutes long is not the live Bible study of the battlefield of the mind. They're just short reads um, that... A lot of them pertain to what we've been studying and what we may study in the future um, week ahead or so. So I hope y'all enjoyed it. Y'all have a blessed day.